Hello and welcome to your 16th scripting tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering instances. So um you may be you may have seen uh with the word instance before in a script if you just you know play around with free models, uh play around with a script, you may have seen the word instance somewhere and probably wondered what it means and what it does and how to use it. So I'm going to show you how to use it this tutorial. So um Again, I just want to say that there's not that many more tutorials in the beginner series that I need to give. I mean, this is number 16. I might, I might do a few more tutorials on loops after this. Um, I might go up to maybe 30, 35, something like that. We might. I think we've just gone past half, halfway through the beginner series. So um, there's not that much more in the beginner series. There's about 16 more, but they're probably going to be short videos. So I'm not sure yet. So. Um, the advanced uh, series on scripting is going to be much longer than this and also I'm going to do a series on GUIs because GUIs is going to come separately so I just want to do it separately and also yeah I'm going to make game tutorials as well so how to make different sort of games so um, yeah I don't want to make the intro of this video too long so let's get started on instances so I'm just going to insert a script quickly Right, so what I've done there is actually done an instance manually by inserting a script. So all in, all an instance does is it creates an object. That's what an instance does. It, it creates an object. So let me show you how to use it in scripts. Um, you can't just write the word instance like this. Like, but you've probably seen the word instance with dot new on the end. Because it's, it's like brick color and vector 3. You need to put dot new on the end of it. So like vector 3 dot new and then your values, brick color dot new, and then your brick color value, and instance dot new creates an object variable. But you need to tell it what object you want to create. Now you can't just write instance dot new just like that. So no, you can't do that. We've got to set it to an object variable because we have created an object. So let's go ahead and create an object variable. Now they they look the same just like any other variable, like an integer variable or a Boolean variable. It's just I mean you don't need to like declare what type of variable it is before it. You don't need to put like obj and then object part. Like in certain programming languages you need to put like int for integer and then the variable name. But in Lua you don't need to just stick the variable like that. Just a quick refresh on variables. So this will become an object variable once we give an object to it. But we're not going to say part equals script dot parent, we're going to do something different. We're going to say part equals instance dot new I spell that right In, yeah uh, instance dot new and then parenthesis in the end we need to tell it what do we want to create okay instance dot new what what are we going to create well I want to create a new part okay so let's just type part into there now if you go to insert basic objects you can see all the different objects you can possibly insert into a game I mean I'm sure there are more than this if you click on different things but these are all the objects that you can insert into the workspace. Okay, so all these objects you can insert a part. Make sure you get the spelling right and also the capital letters right. Capital P for part, and capital I for instance, lowercase n for new. So um, make sure you get all that right. But I could insert anything. I could insert a hopper bin. I could insert a tool. I could insert a truss part, wedge, a text box for GUIs. Uh, but in this case, I'm inserting a part. So there we go, part. It's just like clicking on it, double clicking on it and inserting it into the workspace, except we're going to tell the script to do that for us. We're going to get the script to insert the part into the workspace. Okay, so part equals instance not new part. Okay, remember this, this can be called anything. You can call it party, but we're going to call it part for sensible reasons. So now we've created a part okay part is now equal to a part like if I go let me just go to insert basic object double click part you can see it's a 4 by 2 by 1 part it's gray and it's unanchored now that's just a default settings for the part it's got studs in the top inlets on the bottom and that's the default you know setting for a part that's how a part would spawn when you create a new part it's not going to spawn all coloured up and anchored and everything. It's just going to spawn like this: unanchored grey brick, four by two by one. Uh, actually, it's no, it's not one. It's one point two, I think. Hold on. Uh, yeah, four, one point two in the y-axis. 
So I mean, if, I, if I were to click it and make it symmetric, go to form factor and then click on symmetric, you can see now it's one because all parts are symmetric. It's, you can't have decimal points when it's symmetric. I can't go 1.5, it just rounded to two. But if it was uh, on brick, then yes, you can have uh, decimal points. In fact, I don't think you can get it to a whole number. I think it, it goes up in point fours when you have it on brick. But anyway, you'll see when you play around with it. I'm just going to quickly stick my charger in because I like where my charger is in. Okay, right, so now you know about form factors. Now let's go back to instances. Let me make it symmetric quickly. So that is how the default part would, would spawn. It'd be form factor of brick and it'd be 4 by 2 by 1.2. And that's how it spawns. Now that's the same thing when you're making a part of a script. It will spawn with the same properties, 4 by 2 by 1.2. It will be grey, it will be unanchored, slots on the top, uh, angulates on the bottom. It will be the same thing when you spawn a part of instance.new. Okay, so what we've done is we've just said, okay, part equals instance.new part. Okay, so we've created a new part, but where is it? We haven't inserted it into the workspace yet. The part is not in the workspace yet. We need to put it into the workspace. Now, there's two ways of doing it. You can either give a second parameter, I mean, a second argument into the instance.new um, thingy. I'm not going to use technical terms because you're beginners and I don't want to confuse you. But we're going to insert another argument. So we can either, we're going to give the part a place to go, if you know what I mean. So let's type in game.workspace. What this will do is it will insert the part into the workspace. Okay, if we didn't have this game the workspace bit here, then it wouldn't know where to put the part. It'd it create the part, yeah, the part would be there, but the parent of the part would be nil. The parent of the part would not exist. I mean there'd be there'd be no parent. This part would have no parent. So therefore we wouldn't see the part. But if we stick the part in the workspace, okay, it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a part and it's gonna stick it into the workspace. Okay? If we were to do game.lighting, it'd create a part and it'd stick it into the lighting. We wouldn't be able to see it, but we could probably clone it from the lighting and stick it into the workspace later on. But we want to put it directly into the workspace. Now the other way of doing this is to take this parameter out and you can do part.parent equals game.workspace. Okay? Part.parent equals game.workspace. That's just changing the parent of this part to the workspace. So it's doing the same thing if you were to put game that workspace as a second argument into this, um, into here. Um, is this is doing the same thing? Okay, so I'm just gonna do it like this. I mean, I norm I normally do it like this. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I normally do it like that, but you can do it however you want. I'm just gonna zoom in quickly so you can see. Okay. So I'm gonna leave it like this. You can do it however you want. However you're most comfortable doing it. It doesn't really matter, but. It's not going to change how the script works, it's just how you prefer to do it. So now what we can do is we can actually, I'm going to close the script and I'm going to press play and look at that, a part has just appeared in the center of the game, okay? It's just appeared in the center of the game but because there's already this base plate here, it's kind of merged upwards. Okay. So let's go away from this. Reset. Let's take the base plate away. And now we can start to change the properties of the part. So let's go ahead and type part dot anchored equals true. What this is going to do is it's going to create the part, it's going to stick it into workspace, and it's going to make this part anchored. We've just taken the anchored property of this part and made it true. So yeah, part dot anchored equals true. And it's pretty simple. I mean look the part is stored inside this object variable. So what we've done is we've gone ahead, got this part from the object variable, we've gone ahead and got the anchored property and set it to true. So now the brick will be anchored when we press play. Okay, so let's go ahead and press play and look at that, it's anchored now. And the position is 0, 0, 0, so that would be vector 3.new 0, 0, 0. And I mean we could change it, we can change the position of the part to part dot position equals vector 3.new give it a new position of 0, uh, 0.5, 0 so now when we press play it'd be slightly higher as you can see it's higher up there and if we go ahead and see the properties 0, 0.5, 0 okay so we've changed the position of the part so we know now when we create a new part we can change the position of it 
Uh, let's go ahead and change the size of it. Now you can't change the size to 0, 5, 0. You can't have 0. It's got to be at least 0 0.2. That's the minimum for a part. So let's go ahead and make it 10, 5, 1. Okay, so 10 on the x-axis, 5 on the y-axis, and 1 on the z-axis. So let's go ahead and press play. And it's you can see it's 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 changed to that size. And if you go ahead and look in the properties, you can see it's changed. Now the reason it's 4.8 is because you've got it on form factor brick. If I were to go ahead and go uh, before I change the size, okay. So before I change the size, I want to change the form factor to factor equals custom. Okay, so if I go to click on part, I can scroll down and see that there is a custom form factor. Okay, here. So that means you can change it to whatever you, you want. You can change it to 0 0.2, you can change it to 2. You can have the size set to whatever you want. So now I can set it to maybe uh, 0 0.2 on the z-axis because it's custom now. So I've changed the parts form factor to custom. I can change it to 0 0.2 size. Oh, it's still playing. I need to reset again. Okay, I need to play, play again. And look at that, it's it's gone much more thinner. Okay, because I've changed the size to 0 0.2 on the z-axis. So we now know how to create a part, how to change all its properties. We can do whatever we want. I can go ahead and change the brick color dot brick color dot new uh, part of brick color. Oh hold on. Part of brick color equals brick color dot new. Uh, let's change it to bright yellow. Okay, so it now be yellow. Uh, what other property can I change? Uh, no, I'm just I'm not going to change any more properties. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you change properties um, once you start experimenting with it. But yeah, you can see how it works now. I mean, another thing I want to tell you is it's good to change the name of the part as well. You don't want to create a part and have the name of it. I mean, let me just take this away. Click play, and you can see that the name of the part is the default value of part. That's the name of the part. It's called part. But say you have tons of parts and you want to call, like you want to get different parts of different scripts, you need to give them names. You need to give the part a different name so you can access it through another script um, and it would be much easier. So just go ahead and change the name of the part to uh, P's part. So, oops, okay, press play. And you can see the name changes to piece part. So now, if I were to make another script and I wanted to access this piece part through the other script, I'll just say game.workspace.piece part and I could access this part here. Okay, so remember to keep re restarting your game when you press play. Okay, so now you know how to do all this. It is pretty simple, it's not that hard. And oh, another thing I wanted to show you is hints and messages. That's like the main reason why I made this tutorial. Okay. Instant uh, h equals instance dot new hint game dot workspace h is just the variable we're going to store hint in um, equals instance dot new hint now hint is the little black bar on the top of your screen like when you're playing a game and it tells you to do something like game starts in ten nine eight seven six uh, and it's normally like a little black bar on the top of your screen that's a hint and I mean you can also make message so instance dot new message and that would be like the grey, big grey box that takes up your whole screen and has a little message in the screen. So I'm going to make a hint. I don't want to make this tutorial too long. Uh, let's go ahead and change the text of the hint to hello. Okay, so h equals instance.new hint to game.workspace. We've made a hint, we've stuck it in the workspace, and we're changing the text of that hint to hello. So let's go ahead and click play. You should see a hint and it says hello. Okay, and yeah, that's. Well, quite simple to do really. Uh, let's go ahead and create a message just to show you what messages are. Uh, press play and you can see the grey box takes up the whole screen and it's got the word hello in it. So that's how to do hints and messages. Um, quite simple. I mean if you want to get rid of the message you just go H destroy like I told you in the last tutorial you can use built-in functions. So if you want to get rid of the message just go H colon destroy that's if you want to completely get rid of the message. Um, so then what it would do is it would like completely destroy it. And if you want to make a new message, you'd have to create a new instance. But if you go ahead and say h.parent equals nil, then what you can do is it will get rid of the message, but it won't destroy it. So what you can do later on in the script is you can say h.parent 
equals game dot workspace and then the, the hint would be back there it would be back in the workspace and people can see it again without having to make a new instance okay so that's just a little something that you can do with hints and messages just change the parent to nil if you don't want to see it anymore um, if you want to completely get rid of it like you would never want to use it again in the script um, then just destroy it with a destroy function okay so that is all that I wanted to teach you in this tutorial um, in the next tutorial we're going to be going over loops uh, yeah loops so there's multiple different like there are different loops that you can do in scripting so I'm going to cover all of them like with separate tutorials and with loops you can do things like countdowns like game starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 uh, you can do so many different things with loops um, loops are so important in scripting you like, have to know what loops are in order to make a game so yeah loops will come next tutorial so remember if you haven't watched all my tutorials go back and watch all of them like every single one of them from tutorial one they're really important so remember if you get stuck don't forget to just comment and I will answer the comment um, and yeah I'll see you in the next tutorial then